I'm going to give you just a few verses to demolish all of evolution. I mean, it's going to crush it completely. So it's going to ruin the entire theory of evolution. So we're going to start off with Genesis chapter 1, please. And then we're going to start out at verse 12. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 12. The Bible says, And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after what? His kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was what? In itself. After what? His kind. And God saw that it was good. Why is that important, Pastor? Because the plants reproduce within its own seed and their own kind. It didn't come from a common ancestry all the way down to somewhere to a lot, some a rock and then before a rock through some Amen. gas or dark matter substance. Plants come from plants, no matter what. But let's also look at Genesis 1.21. Genesis 1.21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the water brought forth abundantly. After what? Their kind. See that? Fish reproduce within their own kind, and the birds separately reproduce within their own kind. They didn't evolve from the fish. Keep reading. And every wing fowl after what? His kind. And God saw that it was good. See that? Two of the same animal types right here. So, uh, Excuse me, not animal types, but two creatures here. Fish type and bird type on the same day. And God specifically mentioned separately reproducing. Another thing is verse 25, verse 25. And God made the beast of the earth, what? After his kind, and cattle, what? After their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, after what? His kind, and God saw that it was good. If that ain't enough, God made it more specific that even land animals, cattle can only produce cattle within their kind, insects and insects within their kind. He made it even more specific here. In total, the Bible says five times in one chapter that a creature reproduces after his own kind. So one, reproduction in their own kind. And it mentioned that five times in the Bible. A plant can only reproduce plants, a bird can only reproduce birds, a fish can only reproduce fish. So I do not believe a fish can reproduce into a bird like evolution teaches. So that's so this completely demolishes the argument of macroevolution. Macroevolution. All right, let's turn to other passages that will debunk the theory. Well, not a theory, it's a fairy tale. <laughs> fairy tale of evolution. It's not even a theory. If, it's if we're going to validate that somewhat as a theory, I'm going to tell you this. That's quite, that is the most wild theory you'll ever hear. Let's also go to Genesis 1 verse 22. Genesis 1 verse 22. Evolution teaches that reptiles preceded the birds. Uh, but what you're going to find out is that the Bible clearly teaches that the birds preceded the reptiles. The process of evolution, the stages of evolution teach after the reptiles and it would go into the birds. But look what the Bible says right here in Genesis chapter 1 verse 22. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters in the seas, and let what? Fowl multiply in the earth. Amen. And the evening and the morning were the what? Fifth day, after that, look at this, look at verse 25. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and what? Everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. See that? Every creeping thing. So reptiles, notice that they were after, not before. So this demolishes evolution again. Let's also look at Genesis, uh, let's see right here. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 14. Genesis chapter 3 and we will read verse 14. Notice right here that the reptiles are definitely within the, cat, uh, within the category of what the Bible says in Gen Genesis 1. The cattle of the earth, the one that creepeth. Let's look at Gen Genesis chapter one, uh, 3 verse 14. The Bible says right here, what did God say about the serpent, reptile? And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. 
Remember, God said cattle, beasts of the field at day six, right? So this has to include the reptiles. So that is included in there. Now, if that ain't enough, let's also look over here in Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 5. Genesis chapter 2, verse 5. Now, remember, evolution teaches that it reigned for centuries before mankind ever existed. But the Bible clearly teaches that mankind existed centuries before it even reigned. Amen. Look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 5 through 6. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So notice right here that another thing the Bible teaches is that it demolishes the idea that rain came before man. No, you'll find out right here that even before man, there was rain. I mean, excuse me, after man it was rain, excuse me. So notice that it's after man that it was rain, which is found at what? Noah's flood. Noah's flood. So it wasn't like raining for centuries to millions of years so that we can get some kind of evolved process and organism that can finally come into an insect. So notice there's a millions and probably billions of years gap then in evolution with water and man. That would put a big hole on evolution. Here's another thing right here. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 12. Genesis chapter 1, verse 12. You notice how if people literally, I mean, I kid you not, if you just simply read the first chapters of Genesis, there's no doubt. You could easily say evolution is phony. Just, just the first chapters of Genesis. Isn't that amazing? Let's look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 12. The Bible says right here, And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the what? Third, third day. That's third day. But what's after this? It's the sun at verse 16. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Oh boy, backwards again. So we see right here, evolution teaches the sun came before plant. And that's literally billions of years gap. Billions, according to them. But the Bible teaches that the plants came before the sun. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, just the first chapters of Genesis. How can one be so blind to not see that? Now, critics, that's why they would like to argue, how can the plants survive without the sun? Well, uh, God simply grew the plants all by himself. Then 24 hours later, that's why there's not that billion of year gap. It has to be a short time. Then within 24 hours later, he gave them some sunlight. By the way, isn't God called the son of righteousness? In Malachi 4, 2. I think that he can take care of the plants, you know. And then he'll have the son take over the job after that. Oh, that's good. Now, this is just so easy to debunk evolution. You can't be an evolutionist after this. Not only that, uh, you'll notice Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, all right? In the what? Beginning, God created the heaven and the what? Earth. Okay, guess what? This is a big hole against evolution. Earth came before the stars. Do you know how many billions of years you're going to have to put a gap on that one now? The stars were created on what? At Genesis 1, we read earlier. Fourth day. Big problem here. Big problem. There is no doubt evolution has a lot of holes just so easily. It is just easily demolished. Uh, another thing that the Bible shows right here is we're going to go to the book of... Genesis 1, verse 21 now. Genesis 1, verse 21. Do you know who is known as the first creatures of life, according to evolutionists? It would be the insects, right? They're the earliest kind of creatures that you would probably go to after the plants. But the Bible shows that this, uh, this should be found in, within the Cambrian layer, like the, uh, the, lowest, uh, the lowest strata down there. So they should be the oldest. But guess what, man? I'll tell you what, that Bible just put holes after hole against evolution. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1, and we'll read verse 21. 
And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So notice that God created the birds, and the evening and the morning were the what? Fifth day. After that, look at verse 25. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind. And everything that what? Creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Well, that is not very good. That shows right here that the birds and even fish were long before the insects. That, you talk about millions of years gap right here. How can you be an evolutionist just reading the first chapters of Genesis? What Christian would lose common sense to believe in evolution Amen. after you just read the first? I didn't, we didn't go to scripture with scripture with scripture. I did not draw a board of dispensationalism. We just looked at first two chapters of Genesis, people. That's good stuff, Pastor. I mean, how can you be so blind? Now let's look at 2 Peter 3. This is the crux of theistic evolutionists. You will hear evolutionists quoting this passage because the Antichrist, he wants to bridge science and religion. So what's going on is that even though there's a lot of uh, evolutionists and atheists within the scientific community, you got to realize this. A lot of them are being open-minded to the spiritual realm. That is growing. And the Antichrist will thus succeed, see, getting that one world system of bridging religion and science. Now you got to realize that science does not contradict the Bible, but their science is not science. It's science falsely so-called. It's not even science. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So what evolutionists will try to do is that 2 Peter chapter 3, they will claim this passage at verse 8, that just because it mentions six days of creation, it just means six long ages of time. That's what they'll claim. Thus, billions of years you can add in there. Now, how this is easily debunked is completely demolished by the fact, if you go to Genesis 1 again. See, we only stuck to Genesis 1 and 2. You don't have to jump to Matthew, Mark, Peter, even though I could do that, Psalms, Isaiah, and those things will demolish evolution. But you got to realize this is that the first two chapters of Genesis, it's like the Lord deliberately put in there so that people who don't know any Bible at all would at least get it. Yeah. <laughs> no, these people don't even get it themselves. Uh, six times, six times. This gets rid of the billions of years. The universe was not created within billions of years. This completely demolishes evolution. When you get rid of this, evolution falls apart. So what you're going to find out right here is that six times at Genesis 1, look at verse 5, and then look at verse 8, then look at verse 13. Did you notice evening and morning, evening and morning, first day, second day, third day, evening and morning. Look at verse 19. Now look at verse 23. You notice this, evening and morning, evening and morning, evening and morning, first day, second day, third day. Look at verse 31. God had to repeat six times so that PhDs with DDs, XYZs, and LMNOP and ABCs could at least get the point. But no, you got hundreds of PhDs out there who didn't see this plainly six times. Evening and morning, first day, third day, fourth day, sixth day, six times. Those were literal 24-hour days. How can you believe in this? They had to jump. So this proves that if they found this verse to support evolution, this is utmost proof. They deliberately blinded their eyes on the first page, which any fool can see. They deliberately blinded themselves from Bible reading. And they were deliberately trying to find a verse that would support their belief. That is evidence. It, oh, well, I'm an honest person. I honestly read the Bible, and I couldn't understand its interpretation. No, why did you jump all the way so many books later to find this? How did you find this verse? Did you learn it from somebody else? 
or was it through your own reading? Or if your own reading, you could have found six times. What do you mean interpretation is deep? Evening and morning were the first day. Okay, I, I can take one of these kids out of Sunday school class and ask them what that means. Does that mean billions of years? Or does that mean 24-hour day? What do you mean? Don't embarrass yourself, please. Not only that, here's another hole. Plants were before the sun, right? What do you think will happen within billions of years? What, what do you think is going to happen to plant life then after that? You know, what, what are you going to do after that? Not only that, if you look at Exodus uh, chapter 20 and verse 11, it proves it was six short days in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 11. So you'll find out right here that the Bible proves over and over again that evolution is definitely faulty. There is no way that evolution can support, can support the Bible in any way, and the Bible completely dismantles that. Not only that, it supports several laws right here. It supports, these are scientific, and I mean scientific laws. It supports the law of biogenesis. Life comes from life. I like how it says Genesis too. Appropriately fits with our book, Genesis. It also supports the law of the... The, the laws of thermodynamics. Yeah. Why? Because what it teaches right here in the laws of thermodynamics, if you know your entropy, yeah. is that if you put a billions of your lifespan in something like that, what's going to happen? It's going to die out. Mm -hmm. And the Bible shows that life had to come from life. Something had to keep it going because everything dies out in the universe. So, look, if that's going to happen, use some common sense. Wouldn't it make sense? You have, to, you have to argue some kind of eternal. And it has to have purpose, too, something that can purpose and guide it. An eternal, purposed power somewhere outside of the bounds of the universe that can keep it running. And what are you going to call it if you can't call that God? <laughs> something that has intelligence and purpose, something that has to make it eternal.